Here we go, unit 5.4, measurement of heat energy. All right, so just a reminder, heat is the energy transferred due to a difference in temperatures. When heat is added, the temperature will rise, with the only exception that is, unless there's a phase change. How much will the temperature rise? Well, that depends on the specific heat capacity, which will also just be called specific heat heat. If something has a high specific heat capacity, more heat is required to raise the temperature. When a substance has a low specific heat capacity, that means less heat is required to raise the temperature. And from table T on your reference table, we have this handy dandy formula here, Q equals MC delta T, where Q is heat, right, which is in joules, or kilojoules. M is the mass of the substance that we're investigating. C is the specific heat or the specific heat capacity and that's a number that you'll be given. Delta T, right? Remember delta means change. So delta T is a change in temperature. Now here there's two other equations we'll take a look at also. Q equals mass times the heat of fusion. That's when we're going through the phase change between a solid and a liquid. So it can either be melting or freezing. Or Q equals mass times the heat of vaporization. That's when we're doing a phase change between a liquid and a gas. Let's take a look at that formula again. All right, so heat is Q measured in joules. When our answer or when our Q is positive, that means the reaction is endothermic, something absorbing energy. When it's negative, that means it's exothermic. M is our mass, unit is grams, sometimes kilograms. Specific heat is C. The unit is joules divided by grams times degrees Celsius. Basically what that does for us, it allows us to cancel out other units to get our Q. And you'll see when we do a bunch of these in class. T is our temperature and the unit is degrees Celsius or Kelvin. And delta T is our change in temperature. Here you can see just a list of different specific heats and what we'll notice on here is some are higher some are lower and the higher specific heat can hold more heat before they heat up something with a lower specific heat takes less heat to heat it up if we notice a lot of these metals tend to have lower specific heat and that's why when you leave a pot a spoon in a pot of boiling water and you're going to touch the handle it gets very very hot okay where if you were to leave you know something that's not one of these materials you know like a wooden spoon is going to have a much higher specific heat because it can hold more heat before it actually feels hot a wooden spoon's not going to feel as hot when you go to touch it okay let's look at an example how much heat is required to raise the temperature of 100 grams of water from 20 degrees Celsius to 70 degrees Celsius? All right, so we're always going to do, like we've done any time we've done equation problems since the beginning of the year, first thing we're always going to do is write the formula. So Q equals MC delta T. And then over here, we're going to write Q equals M equals C equals delta T equals. And then we're going to read the problem to see what's what. All right, how much heat, so Q, that's what we're trying to solve for, is required to raise the temperature of 100 grams water, so the mass is 100 grams water, from 20 degrees Celsius to 70 degrees Celsius. Now this is an important thing. Whenever we talk about change in temperature, it's always going to be equal to the final temperature minus the initial temperature. Okay, so here it's 70 degrees. 
minus 20 degrees, which is equal to 50 degrees Celsius, or delta T is 50 degrees Celsius. But what about C? Well, C is the specific heat of water, and if you look on our reference table, we're going to see that that is 4.18 joules over grams times degrees Celsius, or kelvins, because they could be interchangeable for this one, because we're talking a change in temperature. All right, so we're solving for Q. That's isolated, so we just have to plug and chug. M, 100 grams. C, 4.18 joules over grams degrees Celsius. And delta T, 50 degrees Celsius. So first thing, I'm going to look and see what I can cancel. I have grams on top, grams on the bottom. I have degrees Celsius on top, degrees Celsius on the bottom. And for my unit, I'm left with joules. Is joules a unit of heat? Yes. So I set this up correctly. So now I just have to plug into my handy-dandy calculator. And 100 times 4.18 times 50. And my calculator tells me 20900 joules. And what I'm going to pretend I did here was put a little point here and a little point zero here and a point here so I don't have to worry about my significant figures. And I get 20,900 joules, which is equal to 20.9 kilojoules. Okay, so to heat up 100 grams of water, which isn't much, 50 degrees Celsius, it takes a whole lot of joules. Okay, so now heat of fusion and heat of vaporization, just a little bit different, right? It's still the unit is still joules. It's positive when it's endothermic, negative when it's exothermic. Right? Mass is the same. HF is the heat of fusion, just like it says here, used for melting and freezing. HV is heat of vaporization, just like it says here, used for boiling and condensation. All right, question time. How many joules are absorbed when 50 grams of water are heated from 30.2 to 58.6 degrees Celsius? So here's what you need to do. You need to go back to the other example, all right, and watch the steps, right? Write down the equation, Q equals MC delta T. Over here, Q equals M equals C equals delta T equals, okay, it's water. So 4.18 joules over grams degrees Celsius. What's the Q? What's the mass? What's the change in temperature? You've got to find those in the problem and be able to come up with an answer. All right, that brings us to the end, and I will see you guys in school.